In this video, we're going to take a look at playback using IVMS 4200. It does share some similarities with typical VMSs. We have our timeline, which we can zoom in and out of. We can scroll through it uh, just by clicking and dragging. We have our typical play, pause, uh, fast forward, slow motion controls. We have an option to tag things, which is similar to a bookmark. It's really only used for downloading. I'll actually tag this. We'll look at it in a minute. And we have our export button. So we're going to go ahead and just play back a clip here and we'll note some issues so first things first video is asynchronous so we can see all three of our cameras are playing back they're actually uh, playing double speed right now just so we can get to our subject entering the screen and this is one of the uh, first issues we'll note so since this is asynchronous um, it's going to be playing back all different times by default we can synchronize it whatever camera we have selected uh, when we hit our synchronize video button, it's going to sync to that camera. However, we do need to make sure our time is set properly on all of our devices. So we have our DVR um, running these two cameras on the top. Our 4132 was set to a different time zone, unfortunately. So we don't have video of our subject walking through. So we want to make sure... Um, since we are in a CMS environment where devices are not recorded to a single server, uh, typically speaking, we're, we're pulling video from multiple devices. We want to make sure we're running a time server. Everything is synced. We'll let this play back. We can see that we get the metadata information. We'll get our analytics rules, bounding boxes for him walking through that scene. There is no multi-camera export so we have multi-camera playback synchronized playback but if we go to download it's simply going to show us a list of files similar to what we have here which is broken up either by a maximum size which defaults to a gig or by motion detection so we'll see some smaller ones for motion events as well we can we can put in a specific time so if we wanted to say uh, do 6 a.m to 7 a.m. We could do so. Hit download and we'll grab just that time. But it is a little bit tedious having to enter in multiple times here. And again, this is all for a single camera. If we hit download by tag, it's simply going to let us download anything we've tagged. So when we hit that bookmark looking button down here, they then appear here. Um, so we can't download things um, multiple cameras at a time. They don't download as executables either. Uh, they simply download onto the local hard drive as mp4 files so we can just double click them play them back in our typical media players um, we do have options for event search so if we see the button under our video here we have event playback that's going to show us motion detection by default um, so we can click through here click on the different events and it'll show us motion as it happens but once we're in event search we're looking at a single camera only uh, we do have the advantage here where we can download uh, event clips so if we know what event we want we can check just that box hit download and we'll download just that motion clip uh, one thing to note we do have the option to search for other analytics so line crossing intrusion detection we do have those running on multiple cameras so you would think if we search for line crossing pull up something on this camera it doesn't if we search for intrusion which is running on all of the cameras that we have in playback here again nothing so not quite sure why really limited documentation uh, as far as why this search doesn't work. We do have some other options for search on other cameras. We don't have all of these analytics running as well, but basically, uh, as we saw here, we have playback simply by file or specific time or our event search, and that about does it.